in studio. Lake is her brother, Scooter. We had you on yesterday, part of the round table, but now you're in the hidden horsepower hot seat. We're gonna get to the bottom. <laughs> hot the hot seat. We're gonna get to the bottom of uh, you know how you got to the point where you are, where a guy like Lake Speed says that you are one of his uh, ultimate mentors. And given the the background he's had, that's that speaks volumes. First of all, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate being here. It's uh, it's it's a great honor to be a part of this. And I'll say one thing: if Lake says I'm way high on his mentor list, the bar's set pretty low. Because <laughs> I know some of the other ones are, are really better than I am. So, but it's good. It's it's wonderful to be in that group. That uh, to be sitting in this chair. Well, and uh, and we've had some great ones in the chair, and uh, and that's the point because. Uh, <clears throat> To extract the information, the life experience. You know, people don't go around talking about how they got to where they are. They mm -hmm. talk about what is the next challenge and how to accomplish it. But I want to know how you got to where you are, so we can learn from that. Started off young, like so many. Uh, went mm -hmm. into the service. So let's I let's did. go back to the beginning, like with a spark of interest in automotive, racing, head service, working, learning, and and then you know you went into the military. Yep, I uh, my. Dad had an auto repair shop, and I hung out there from the time I could walk. And went along. He fired me when I was 13 because it was time he <laughs> go out and do something. So I did that, and then ended up having to go in the service. And I was committed to engines. I wanted to do something with engines, and this was about the time that the piston engine stuff was going out on aircraft, I liked aviation too. And jets were coming in and I wanted pistons. So the only place that would guarantee me something like that was the Navy. So I went into the Navy, worked on the big 1800 inch radial engines. And I remember telling my dad, I said, man, I'm afraid I won't be able to do this. He said, son, they're the same. It did, some of them are V, some of them are flat, some straight, some long, some short, some round but they're exactly the same. They do the same thing. And that's what I learned. They're all the same. And got through that, and uh, that was like a, a four-year period where you had some time to think. And I thought about formerly line mechanic at a Chevrolet place, doing this, doing that. I said, I don't want to do that. My passion is in something high performance. That's what I want to do. So the day I got out of the service, I went to Racing Head Service, which I had hung with those guys before uh, for a long time. And there was only like five people in the whole place. And I said, I want to come to work. So I started back there pulling heads out of the vat and steaming the heads off and cleaning them up. And went from there, learned different things and I kept wanting to learn. Then the more I learned, the more I did, and the more I did, the more I had to learn, and <clears throat> it just kept going and, until I had an opportunity to, I guess you could say, buy into the business with a little sweat equity. So I had a little piece of, of that business, and it, it grew, and another opportunity came, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew. And um, then Comp Cams was started in the I mean, we, we sort of converged those two businesses together in the 80s. A lot of the other owners either were, were getting too old, they were, they were retiring out, they were doing whatever. And all of a sudden, I just looked around and there I was, you know, and, and myself <laughs> and one other guy were the last two standing. And we began trying to grow, trying to grow and trying to grow. And... Uh, there it is. So I, I've never lost the passion of doing what I do. Um, still haven't. Uh, and my, my business partner is a lawyer. And I learned early on that lawyers compete the same way as racers compete. It's just like lining up on a drag strip. They line up against the guy on the other side of the courtroom and they want to kick his ass. Um, and after they kick, one kicks the other's ass, then they'll go have a drink. It's just like a race. <laughs> so, you know, we share that same passion for competition and uh, have never stopped that. I don't. I hope we never do. Well, that's the thing is that he, that's the really abbreviated version of that story, by the way. <laughs> it's a lot of history there. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of, in the middle we, we won't talk about. Right. But the thing is, like you said, is that same passion 
for competing. You've the one that I think coined the phrase, you know, some people race cars, other people race companies. Mm -hmm. And you you and Ron and the whole culture at Comp Cams, you guys kind of infuse that of you know, from racing head service to Comp Cams, now you're driven that that we're racing companies. And we're we're competitive yeah. just like and the thing is what's neat about it to me is that you know the people that win the races are the ones everybody knows about. That's right. But Robert Yates doesn't win the Daytona 500 without the camshaft that you guys built for him. That yep. you're, you're partners in what you're doing. So talk a little bit about, about that partnership mentality and how important that is. I'll use a Robert Yates racing in, you know, mm -hmm. instance here. When Doug graduated college, I don't know when that was, middle 80s sometime, Robert called me and he said, and, and Robert and I had known each other for, for a good while and talked a lot. And he said, my kid's getting out of school and he's just not, he doesn't understand business. He doesn't understand how to treat people. He doesn't understand, he, he did well in school, but he, he thinks if he just outlives me, then he'll be okay. And I want you to teach him the world. He said, will you take him for a year? I said, Robert, I don't want him to move, <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll, he'll work for me for a year and, and we'll teach. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I had Doug for a year. That's right when the restrictor plate engines were coming out. We took, we worked, we probably ran 400 camshafts through the engines in a short period of time. Worked his ass off. It had physically. to. Me, me, me. Physically, that's a lot of work. It. Yes. And because uh, Robert told me, he said, I want you to work his butt off. He wouldn't say ass off at the time. but um, <laughs> Robert's preacher son. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but he came along at the end. He was okay at the end. But um, Doug took his first two engines to Daytona and sat on the front row and won the race. First two engines he had ever built as an engine builder. Pretty good, uh, pretty good use of that year. Wow! So I'm I'm pretty proud of him. Doug calls me his racing dad, mm -hmm. and uh, and we continue that relationship right now. And I, I'll tell you another little instance that involves our friend Lake. Uh oh, here we go. <laughs> this started in St. Elmo's in what year? Oh four. Something like that. Oh five, my thumb. They said, "Come on, we're going to have dinner. I want to talk to you about this idea." And it's Mark Cronquist and, and Lake, and I don't know if J.D. was there or not. But there was five or six of us mm -hmm. there. I ended up having to pay for the meal. <laughs> and um, but We bought fun. a lot of camps from you back then, so it was but, fair. Yeah, oh, it was okay. It all worked out. Which is why it is so vividly remembered. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember the shrimp sauce. But um, they said, you know, we've been doing this oil, and it's really good. And we think we can sell enough oil to pay for our oil program and I told them you're gonna screw this up don't do it let me do it let me take it I'll commercialize it we'll do all that we'll get you what you need and just send you money and you won't have to do anything and you'll get money oh no we think we can do it we think we can and um, I don't know I stayed kind of close to JD and bless his soul JD was a mm -hmm. wonderful man oh, yeah. wonderful wonderful man um, and, and another thing to the whole Gibbs team, I don't know that I've ever had a situation where I work with better people. So that being said, one day JD calls and said, you know, I've been thinking, he said, we're better at racing cars than we are at selling oil. Will you still do something with us? So we worked out a plan to do something. It was important to him that all of his people stayed on and we kept the the business as it was and um, we did that and that's how we ended up with driven and it was it, you know the good lord watches out somehow for people that aren't smart enough to do it for themselves and somehow he dropped that driven oil into our laps and little did we know that 10 12 years later that was going to be our primary focus and now we're 
moving it up the ladder the same way we did our other companies. So that, that's been kind of a fun deal, but there's interesting stories behind every one of them. I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh, the, the, the most exciting thing for me, probably one of the biggest learning curves for me personally in that whole process was getting the know Billy and working with Billy. Yeah. That, you know, this way things worked out, right? It's just uh, that transition from being just Gibbs to then being part of the, the comp family and having that access to that resource. Even though we were separate companies all along, but being able to share that, that sister partnership, if you will, yeah. working with Billy in developing a testing method. That's right. You know, that the, was, oh my God. Lake used a lot of his, um, he would test and he would use camshaft wear as, as an indicator of what's going on, which, which is very common. And we really didn't know how to measure wear on a cam. Just, I mean, you look at it, you measure it with a caliper or whatever, but Billy developed a, uh, and made it. You couldn't go buy what he made. No. He just took some old stuff and made this machine to, to measure surface finish and measure wear. And it, it made us all so much smarter and, and aware of what's going on. Oh. It, it just, it, it pr plowed new ground. Oh yeah, and that was what—that's what's fun. It's, it's plowing new ground is fun. And, and like Warren said, we failed a lot. We right. we, 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 we made all kinds of mistakes early Absolutely. on, trying to figure out how to make things better. But then eventually, we really hit on something. And my gosh, I me mean, that, that the GP one that driven sells. Okay, sounds like a plug. I know, but it's the best stuff I've ever tested. It's amazing. But mm. we would have never known that if we hadn't gone through all that work. To develop a test method. I mean, he remembers the first time we tested it. I said, "Eh, no way. That that's an outlier. That could not possibly be right. We'll run it again. Ran it again. Same result." And I'm like, "Nah, we we, we had to double check everything. Ran it a third time. I'm like, hmm, okay, this might be real because wow. it was such a change. But yeah, you know, again, back to having the right people and being able <clears throat> to share resources uh, and that that drive. You know, Billy was is just as mm -hmm. driven." as I was to find a way to make it better. And you were the one that was always pushing us. And that's it my this job. wouldn't accept, right? That, that okay, being complacent, no, not good enough. See, right now, and I need to get on his butt, but uh, I'm walking through our shop the other day, our, our building, and I'm in the back and I see all this stuff, all these drums of stuff. <laughs> and they got, you know, they're dusty. Mm -hmm. And I brought somebody up there. I said, what the hell is all this? Well, this is all the bad ideas. That's, my, that's your manifolds, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, uh, there's but, a I mean, there's collection. Right? I was, that's why I have an opportunity to say, like, that was your fault. All this stuff is <laughs> your fault. But um, He wasn't afraid to fail. No. No. Not, no, I mean, not at all. And uh, we have to. You know, you just have to. And it's, it's not fun to fail by any means but it sure is fun to win and it's fun to get past that and fun to find that all those bad things led me to this to this one thing well back to the 400 camshafts there's yeah. only one camshaft that, that won that race one camshaft won that race but there are 399 that didn't that's right and, and probably i don't know what happened to him at, at richard childress's which we've worked with forever mm -hmm. he didn't want anybody to know what cams he was running right so when he built his next building he took camshaft and used them as rebar in the concrete. So it's got the most expensive slab on that building that you could ever possibly have. Oh my gosh. One of his buildings where there's a little development thing now, there's there's camshafts, hundreds of them in re, as rebar in the concrete. Well, like Warren yesterday, right? He said that, that the, the twin cam engine they had, yeah. they destroyed it. Yeah. I don't want anybody to see it, so I just destroyed it. Yeah. Unbelievable. I know. That's funny. That. Just that, well, first of all, a thousand years from now, when they're chipping out that concrete, someone's going to be for a heck of a hell of a thing. Yeah, <laughs> they but, won't even know what a camshaft is then. <laughs> passion goes a long way, mm -hmm. but ultimately, though, you have to have talent. So the business acumen and the leadership quality. Um, where did that all come from? Was it your time in the military? Was it just, uh, you know, to be in position is one thing. But to be able to succeed is another thing, and that comes down to talent. So I'd like to go back to that. Okay. You succeeded. What do you owe that to? Where well, that you know, from? the military taught me a strict discipline is the key to success, or a key. You, you, when, when you 
have a goal you have to discipline yourself to get there that's fine I came back and was working within the companies and we would we would see I mean I'll give you an example and this was before I worked for comp cams when I was at RHS we decided that we wanted to build late model dirt track engines it had never built one so we built one and went to Florida for speed weeks and we put it in a guy's car and he led 99 laps and it blew up on the last lap hmm. Kevin Gundecker he's still involved in racing and uh, we didn't know you had to run a special rod and we didn't know that you had to run a dry sump system and we just didn't know we took down there what we knew and it made really good power and it almost won the race but we learned hey I, we got to step up our program here a little bit so long story short there's a picture hanging in my office of a dirt track race that was run right here in Kingsport just down the street and at the time it was the old NDRA dirt racing series that was the the premier of all and this was the highest paying dirt race that had ever been run to that point and there's a picture of five cars coming around the first corner well four of them had our engine in it so we just said we're going to take that and we're going to go get it we did now the thing that we didn't do is make money we were horrible at managing the business and that's where my partner the attorney came in and taught us I mean probably had he not come in we'd have all ended up in jail for tax <laughs> reasons or something I, you know because we were horrible at doing business the proper way and um, when he came in he put the the business acumen into it uh, and that is what really turned it around the combination of those two and you know we, we run the business today we ran it for 20 30 40 years and we stay very separate we'll go a month or so and never see each other but he runs that I run this we talk we sort of we argue we fight but we come together with that one thing and that's what we go do and it's been it's been very good for me to learn that it's probably more important to make sure you, you make money than it is to make sure you make the best product because you can make the best product and if you're in business and you don't make money, you won't be there long. That was what I told these guys originally on the uh, oil. I said, you can make this oil, but to sell it, you got to think about so many things and so many different price structures and so many ways to get it to market that you're not going to, you won't succeed because you'll never, you, you can't learn that stuff. No, you don't. It's it's the science of building the oil is way yeah. easier than yeah. building the rest of the business. <coughs> that right. was the hardest part. You know, making us. the power was easy. Yep. Making money was not. No, that was that was much much harder. And, and we had to reconstruct the the th not the oil. That was perfect, but we had to reconstruct the way we took it to market, and that was the business side that we put into it. Very interesting. I and the thing is, <coughs> if you don't do the business side right. You go out of business, right? Then the product's gone, and then you leave everybody hanging. And that was kind of the the main thing from the Gibbs side is that listen, we we have this product, we know it's good, but we're struggling at keeping this thing alive. Well, we don't want to burn everyone's bridges by it going away because the easy no. thing to do is just say, well, you know what, we're a race team. This isn't what we need to do, and we'll just stockpile a little bit of this for a while, and we'll call it good, and just burn everybody else that's not how you treat people that's not the right thing to do well, that wasn't the I just mentioned the Gibbs family and that's not what they do no no that's not their, it's their, just not them no but what, what I'm taking out of it though is that you recognize what the you know strengths were mm -hmm. and what they weren't and you brought somebody <coughs> in made connection with someone who you trusted who yep. could handle the area that wasn't your strongest and help that's you right. succeed and I think that's a valuable lesson it, it's it's a lesson of you know, selecting your, your team members, building your team with the right people. Uh, you know, you always want to build your team with people that are way smarter than you are. And and we try to do that. Uh, we don't always succeed, but we try to do it. Um, 
and you know the 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 template that we've built with with my strengths and and Ron, my partner's strengths is it will work if we were to uh i mean we went from camshafts to oil same template works if we went to uh pickles or firecrackers it wouldn't make any difference the template works and so we, we build the template we try to adhere to the template we try and put the best people in the core of whatever that business is going to be and give them the right tools and then get out of their way some live feedback here from brian hosenfeld uh, to, <laughs> wait a minute, I may, may not want to answer this. But go ahead. That's go why ahead, I Brian. Yet. I just let it, like, let it uh, no. Two of the finest, smartest gentlemen I've ever had the opportunity to work with and learn from. Always an honor to spend time with Lake and Scooter. I thought you were saying Joe. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah, no, I don't know well, why. Brian but, uh, is uh, a sales guy at Comp. Very, very, very good. Or Edelbrock now, I guess. I right. have a hard time with that. But um, still a Bush series to me, so some things yeah, exactly. hang on for a while. But he was a, a one of the more recent additions to uh, to the group there, and has been fantastic. Oh Excellent. yeah, I mean, it's, it's again a great team. I, I can't. I have a hard time finding the finding the right words to say how much it. Well, one, I'm very thankful that you're here. Uh, thank you for for being part of this. I know that you were part of the original AETC. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that you approve of, of our this, this what we're fantastic. doing with the legacy of this. Yes. But the, that team there in that environment, that was, I got the best of both worlds, right? I got I work, I work for Joe Gibbs mm -hmm. and with Mark and be in that <coughs> environment, and then go over to Comp and be part of that environment and learn that side of it. I mean, that's I, I'm the luckiest guy in the whole world. I mean, I. Yeah, you know, Dave Ramsey says, right? I'm I'm better than I deserve to be, right? I mean, it's that's I, I don't I didn't earn any of this. <laughs> it, it's crazy what's happened, and it, it is. But it's but you run with it though, right? You you can't yeah. just there and say, well, oh, well, that's you take it and you run and you push in that environment and just keep going. And it's cool to see what you guys are doing with Driven. I obviously have a lot of heart and pride in that because it's a continuation. Um, but you know that it's as you go forward, so. What, what's what's next? What do you, what do you think next? I mean, obviously, yeah, at this point, with not having comp anymore, you could just throw your feet up on the table and say, ah, I could. "I'm good." Yeah, and and I, I could, but but that's not me, and, right? And it's not Ron, and it's not the template that we talked about, right? Um, I'm going to tell one more little story here, at least. When I first started the oval track engine thing, mm -hmm. we had. A really good racer at the time named Freddie Smith that used our stuff. Yep. And Freddie was lived in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, right off the highway. And his dad worked a, had a little shop there where he just piddled around. His dad was was fairly old at the time, but he was one of the original Holman Moody guys. He built engines at Holman Moody. So early on at Holman Moody. So I'd go in. His name was Grassy Smith. I'd go in and we'd talk and we'd just sit and talk. And he said, uh, I'm building this engine over here. He said, what's the best cam for that engine? And I don't know what it was. And I told him, he shook his head. He said, that's, that's not it. I said, well, you know, I, what, what are you talking about? I kind of know. And I said, that's the best cam there is. Nope. He said, the best cam for that engine is the one that you'll develop tomorrow. He said, if you're doing your job, tomorrow's cam will always be better than today's cam. And, and I've carried that thought for 50 years. And you say, what's next? Well, whatever tomorrow is, I want to be better than today. And if we can keep doing that, like I say, I don't know if it'll be oil or if it'll... I mean, we're already doing some, some fuel treatment mm -hmm. octane booster or whatever it's called i get my mouth washed out when i say octane booster <laughs> but it's something else i don't know what it is <clears throat> but i don't know what it'll be i'm sure something will come along that fits that template well and um, you know we'll be able to pull it into the family but we're not going to go away we can't I happen to have a little bit of insight here. Yeah, they have a little treasure trove of some pretty cool advanced technology 
Yeah. It might come out one day. <laughs> you know, somebody, I don't know if it was when we were at one of the tables outside sitting mm-hmm. talking, uh, and they were talking about things that cost a lot. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm mm-hmm. just listening. And somebody said, this wheel that we made, it was Kyle Fickler was at Weld at the time. We made this wheel and it was $5,000. Everybody said, no way it'll sell. Well, it, it did. They couldn't get enough of them. Well, we made a plastic manifold back in the 80s for the LS, and it was very expensive to make. We had probably around $700,000 invested when we made the first one and didn't really know if it was going to work. We thought it would. Had run it through all the GT power and all the simulation programs, but had never made one. And we, that's before you had all you could print them and mm-hmm. before you could do any of that. We had to make one and you had to make the tooling to do it. So we made one, here's 700 grand. Go run it and see what it'll do. And it made like 12 horsepower, which I was, but the, the LS crowd was happy. <clears throat> then it come, well, first I had to tell Ron, my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's scary. And I got and and Lake Scott, he like uh, knows him. Yeah, yeah. He's as tight as a bark on a tree. And I said, Ron, we've made this. I said, I said, sit down first. You're going to have a really good idea. Now I'm going to explain to you what it is. Which that's the way I have to work him. And I said, we've got this manifold idea. We're going to do. Okay. So it's probably going to cost seven hundred thousand dollars, and he said, "Oh, we can open that. Dumb idea. Can't do that." I said, "Well, we're already four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in, so I'm going to have to finish it." And then I got the lecture, the dummy lecture of of all times. Uh, I've had those before. They're, they're not, <laughs> you, you learn to you learn to deal with them. But we made the manifold. At the time, you could go buy one from GM for two hundred dollars. That was almost as good. We made ours sexy. We put lipstick on the pig and made it sexy. And uh, I said, what am I going to sell these for? I, you know, they're $200. I, I said, well, we got $750,000 in this. Maybe I can sell a 1,000 of them. So I'm going to price them at $750. And then we'll we'll be flush. Well, we, we priced them at 900 I think. And since then, have sold hundreds of thousands of them. So it's been very successful. But the most successful thing is we had the manifold on display at the SEMA show. And it was at night, we had covered everything up. And the next morning, I came in, and Ron had one of his buddies from another company. And he's peeling that thing back, and he's talking about this manifold. And he said, And you know what? I'm the only son of a bitch in the industry that had the balls to do something. Get out. <laughs> Man, I've made it now. That's I have made it now because I because I made it his idea, and uh, it, it it has done well. And those are one of those things that you can't be afraid to fail. You got to just commit to it. And if you're pretty sure of the team you built, and pretty sure of what you're doing, it's probably going to work out. Wow, so that right. was a good one. So. Yeah. Thinking about this and the the collection of characters over there, kind of made me think about WJ yesterday and the WJ University. Yes. So talk about some of the uh, <coughs> graduates of the uh, RHS and Comp School, because I know there was a collection of characters back in the early days. Oh yeah. I Man, I, I probably a lot of guys don't know that Joe Lenati actually worked for RHS, right? Nope. No, he didn't. Nope, he never did. He Joe worked for Joe was a baker at Kroger. Okay. He baked bread, and he would go over during the week, weeknights, to a local engine rebuilder, mm-hmm. and he'd grind cams. Okay. And at the time, I mean, camshaft grinding or developing was really, really crude. Right. And he would take a master, who's about this big, and he'd say, I want to change this lobe, and he'd go weld a little bit on this and grind a little bit and hold it up and, you know. Yeah and physically make hand make the lobe and um, we were gonna start a business okay I knew there was some connection we were with gonna Joe start somewhere. a business yeah. and the week before we were gonna have the press release on starting this business 
here's an ad in National Dragster for introducing Lenati Cam. So I said, well, I guess we're not going to have a business. <laughs> so shortly after that, we started Cam Dynamics, and that moved into into competition cams. So uh, Joe was kind of an early player in okay. helping us start the business. He just didn't work out that way. And, and now we bought Lenati after Holly had had it. So, right. Uh, you know, some of the, the characters in this industry, I, you know, I was always Warren's enemy. I I could never, I wasn't allowed to speak to Warren because I was really, really close friends with Bob Glidden. And those two hated each other. It, I just, that was, the, the competition was so bad that Glidden didn't want me even talking to him because he didn't want even the, because I knew stuff in Glidden's engine that a long time ago he crashed really bad at Atlanta. Yep. Just tore the car all to pieces. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he did is got out of the car and took off his jacket and covered the manifold. Because <laughs> he didn't want anybody to see the manifold. I mean, I had seen all that stuff. I, right. I knew, and so I wasn't allowed to talk to Warren. And we had the big laughs about that yesterday. But, um, you know, the, the, the players that have been part of my life, more so than the ones that have come up working there, um, you know, Buddy Ingersoll comes to mind in drag racing, mm-hmm. who was not afraid to fail and not afraid to go off the reservation. Yeah. You know, he bought that four cylinder turbocharged Pinto. And one of the biggest problems we had was keeping the flywheel on it because it vibrated so bad. But we, talking about vibrations. Mm-hmm. Well, and we didn't know what to do. So we ended up welding it on. It worked. It was so crude. It worked. The only time it brought up a problem was when he sold the car, and the guy called him and said, "How do I get the flywheel off?" And <laughs> I said, "Well, it's part of the crankshaft now." <laughs> but you know, we did things that were, were crazy. We I'd never seen an overhead cam engine with a roller follower. I'd, I'd never paid any attention to them. We wanted to put a roller cam in it, so we just ground a roller cam and put it in there. We were we were so dumb. We didn't know what, how bad the valve train was going to be, and it started breaking the cam towers off. So we said, oh, these dummies at Ford, they didn't make the cam tower strong enough. So we machined all that off and made billet cam towers, and it broke them off. And then we realized that those were all bad ideas. Let's go back and start over again. But we weren't afraid. We, we probably weren't smart enough to be afraid. We just went forward with, with what we thought might work. and. The, the very end result, the thing was very, very fast. He bought that turbocharged V6, and uh, actually when it got banned was right over here at the racetrack when he almost won an IHRA race yes. and could have, he could have beaten Glidden, but he knew, you know, politically it was the wrong thing to do. But that thing was really, really fast, and uh, it was plowing new ground all the time. You know, on that on that note, just because we got the Thunder Valley <coughs> Nationals, and I, I I'm very happy about where we are right now. Mm-hmm. I love drag racing, but the road not taken, right? Like Warren, 1988, he thought fuel injection should come in, and maybe if it had, like, what would be different? And the same thing with Buddy Ingersoll, mm-hmm. that car. Had they decided to say, yes, let's do that, and figure it out, and work it in, like what? How far? How much further along might we be, or or maybe not? Well, sometimes, and and I think back, and that was kind of the time that the import we called them import cars at the time were coming in, and NHRA said, "Wow, they're coming in. We need to make a series for them," which they did, and it failed. SEMA had all these big shows; they failed. All of them failed, but they didn't fail because they were bad they didn't fail because they were bad ideas it just wasn't the right time and here we are 15 years later or something and you look around and that's that's the the crowd that's coming in it's it's time we were we were talking to an older generation like us and they didn't know what it was we were kind of on to something we knew we were and and now i think as we sit here next year We'll probably be talking as more about the, that style of racing or mm-hmm. that style part of uh, of our industry because it's changing, and I'm happy to see it changing. And I look back and think maybe we had some early, early influence and just didn't know it. 
but um, there, there's reasons that all that stuff happens. Interesting. Well, and you mentioned the drifting the other day, and uh, I like to think we'll be able to pull some of those kids back into some of the older we school will. stuff, too. Somebody told me today that there's a kid coming here today, 18 years old, that started a shop, and that's his whole clientele. Mm -hmm. Right, is the the drifting, and he said he's into it. He loves it. He wants to do more and more, and he knows the value of the information that's in a a forum like this. So he's coming to search it out, and more and more of them will. It, it'll be fun. Exactly, Scooter. Yeah. This has been incredible, and wealth of knowledge obviously and just the feedback that we get from Lake and and folks on the internet. And I love the fact that you are. Uh, still forging ahead yeah, we have to that's we can't stop well as grassy said we got to be better tomorrow than we are today love it yeah yep. he can sit here all day and just tell stories on me by the way it, it, i could so he's being really nice i'm, to me. I'm, I'm being really he, nice no, no, we, got, we always have time for that uh, it's the end uh, of, the, of the segment we'll do we that next time cool you gotta drop one on it. Like yeah there you go and if, give me give me a quick 30 second embarrassing <laughs> lake speed junior story like there's got to be one where he well, broke something or blew something up or well he i'm sure something caught fire i'm sure that there's things that i have found out that were done that he forgot to tell me at the time mm -hmm. that were being done you know I, I would be looking at just barely looking at invoices and things that are going out and i said holy crap this guy in australia has bought all this stuff until i look and it says no charge and Lake says, oh, he's doing some testing for me. This is just oil testing stuff. And I thought, damn, that's a lot of testing. But, you know, sometimes it's better off that I don't know some of those things than I do know because it worked out fine. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> well, <Yes. laughs> he, he may have learned that at our place, too. Oh, yeah. That's just kind of like the manifold story with Ron. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you very much. This has been tremendous. Appreciate it. And these are the kind of interviews we do on Hidden Horsepower, presented by Total Seal Piston Rings. You should definitely go check them out. This segment brought to you by Comp Cams. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Scooter. Thank you. I enjoyed it. And uh, I believe you'll be back later on today. Or I, Actually, I you just got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. So. Well, thank you for your time here at the Engine Performance Expo. All right. Well, thank you for doing it, and I look forward to being fortunate enough to be a part of it in the future. Certainly hope so. Certainly hope so.